One of the more difficult concepts to teach to a new student learning GCL Plus is variables. It is difficult because unless you get yourself into a situation in programming where you need it, it's difficult to wrap your head around. Also, when you open an existing program, it may be one of the first things you come across. So naturally, you want to know what it is, how it works, and what it's used for. The language reference explains the purpose of a variable as follows. It declares and allocates storage space in the PG object memory for one or more variables. So when a controller sees the word variable, it allocates a memory location. Let's step through an example to see why we use variables. There is a function commonly used in GCL Plus called scale. A scale function is a reset. It is used to convert one range of numbers into another range. It is used all the time to calculate heating supply water temperature set point based on changing outdoor air temperature. Graphically, it looks like this. The values on the lower axis of our graph are the outdoor air temperature sensor readings, and the two values are the min and max range we need to react to. On the left-hand side is the calculated return water temperature set point. In this example, at plus 15, this scale function will return a value of 55 degrees. And as the outdoor air temperature falls, the return value or supply water temperature set point will increase. Once the outdoor air temperature reaches minus 12 degrees Celsius, the supply water temperature set point will be calculated at 85 degrees Celsius. From the GCL help file, let's copy and paste the syntax for the scale function. We will then paste it into the program as a comment line to use it as a guide as we use it. So I'm going to start typing in scale, and because it's a built-in function, it'll change color, and then we need to add our brackets. Now, our input we're going to use is we're going to look at outdoor air temp, and I have that already in my database. And then the next parameter to fill in in the scale function is bias. Now, I'm not going to get into this too much, but it's a very useful but advanced feature. Look at the help file to see how to use it but most of the time you're going to open up a program and that's going to be set to zero. Next, what we need to fill in is our X1 value. That is minus 12 Celsius. And our next after that is Y1, which is plus 85 degrees Celsius. And then our X2 is plus 15. And then our Y2 is plus 55. And then close brackets. I will try validating it to see if it, the compiler likes it and it does. So our syntax is correct. Now looking at our example here in that we copy and pasted from the help file, you can see we got our scale function all lined up with all of its different parameters, but it's going to return a value. It's going to make that calculation based on what it sees with outdoor air temperature and then give us our heating hot water temperature set point. But it wants to store that information somewhere. Well, how the syntax works is it's got to go into something. It has to go into a box of some sort. And that's where our variables come in. So a variable is a box that stores information. And as you saw earlier, we put those at the beginning of a program. So we used fan control equals 100 in one of our previous examples. But basically how to create a variable is you type in variable, and it's a reserved function, so it's going to change color. And then we got to give it a name. So basically, we're creating a box and we're putting a label on the outside. So the label I want to put in is heating hot water underscore set point. And when we create this box, we have to tell the controller what type of information is going to be put into it. And there are basically three types of data that we use within a program. There's integers, which is a whole number. That means that it's a number with no decimal points. The next is real numbers, which are floating point numbers. That means they do have a decimal point. And then we also have strings, which are ASCII two characters. Those we would use if we're having to search through and get a bunch of controller names or object names. But the most common two that we use is the integer and real numbers. So for our example, I'm going to make it real. So basically I have to say as real. And now I have a placeholder 
to receive the information or the calculation from our scale function. So I'm going to just going to simply copy and paste it so I get my syntax correct. And now as scale function gets executed, whatever calculation it makes, that number is going to be put into heating hot water underscore set point variable. We can now reference this calculated value throughout the program. Here I have programmed two more lines of code using the scale statement. Instead of looking at the outdoor air sensor, these look at the calculated heating hot water temperature set point, and then split the calculations. Starting at 55 degrees, boiler number one starts to receive a 0 to 10 volt reset signal. Once the scale function sees 69.9 degrees as a set point, it will be outputting 10 volts to the first boiler. Then, when the heating hot water set point is at 70 degrees, boiler number two starts to receive its 0 to 10 volt signal until it's 10 volts at the calculated value of 85 degrees. What we have done here is declared a local variable. This box of information containing the heating hot water set point is only available in this program and cannot be accessed by another program, even on the same controller. It also means that the information contained in this variable cannot be accessed or displayed on the graphics. So this could be an advantage or a disadvantage. If you want a piece of information only kept locally on the program so that nobody else can see it, then you would use a local variable. But if it is something that needs to be on the graphics or shared on the network or with another program in the controller, then it would be better to use an AV or a BV object to store this information. It depends on what you're trying to do as to what's the best way to do this.